So, sorry, somebody had just came and used the bathroom. I'm going to say, like, these rich, proper white people, they're the ones who think it's a badge of honor to freaking not wash your damn hands when, when you use the bathroom. But then they, you know, they're self-righteous and holier than thou about a freaking mask. I'm not talking about all white people. But, you know, the rich, arrogant, you know, that's what I mean. You, you know, the ones who think they're higher and superior and better, they think it's a badge of honor to, um, like, take a shit and don't care if you got doodle on your hands and don't even wash their hands. But then they're self-righteous and holier than thou about a freaking mask. So... This lady, she just came in here and used the bathroom. She was wearing a purple shirt. And um, when I was, so I didn't want her to hear what I was saying, you know, in this video. And so I don't even know if she was a perp just waiting for that freaking opportunity. But I don't want to accuse her of being a perp. She might be an innocent person just minding her own business and needs to use the bathroom. But she just freaking rinsed her hands. If there's supposed to be such a coronavirus or whatever, but you wear a damn mask, but you just rinse your freaking hands and don't use soap and then uh, dig in the paper towels, you know. Um, but anyway, back to what I was saying. So the old, old lady, she don't even speak or say hi to me or she just look at me like, a, like I come from like planet Mars or something whenever I say hello, like when I see her when she comes on her shift to work. So, if you look at me like I'm crazy, and if I ask you a question, and you say something that's kind of silly and smart ass and rude, I mean, what am I supposed to think about you? You know, and, 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 and then the lady just all of a sudden come out with the, ooh, here's some newspaper. You know, it seemed like, that seemed like it was cleverly doctored up. <clears throat> and then she's like, well, why don't you, um, have you ever gone to PSC campus and administration and see if you can just sit in on a class and, and you, you know, and then she's like, well, that, should, that ought to give you something to do if you're bored and this and that. Like, is she, she's trying to slick talk her way to get, to try to convince me to just stop coming here to this library. Like, she don't want me here. And when I had that narcissistic substitute perp librarian, he just made everything worse. Because um, I've been coming here since last year, but when I wasn't going on UWF campus, you know, every now and then I'll come here. But I was going on UWF campus just about every day to get my shower and swim and stuff like that. But now I can't really do that like I want to. So I can't have to go days with no bath, no shower. And um, so the lady was like, well, in case you get bored, you know, you can go sit in some class, sit, sit, in, sit in whatever class you want. You can go to PSC campus and check and see if they, if they allow you to do that and this and that. And, and she's like, well, I like to, she said, if you can tell me anything about history, and I and I listen, and I, I'm interested in history and this and that, well, whatever, you know. So um, she acted like she wanted to give me tips on how to get housing and this and that, or to go to this place and go to that place. But I think she just disgusted with seeing my face and just don't want to see me continue to come here. I guess after she found out I was homeless. But um, she tried to tell me, I mean, and there was no listing of any place to go tomorrow. So she freaking lied and she knew that there was no, um, I think she was just trying to distract me. <laughs> um, but she knew that, there, she knew damn well that, that she swore up and down that it was in a newspaper. And I saw no listing of anywhere to go tomorrow. You know, so I, I even told her, I said, there is no listing in here. I don't see a listing in here talking about places to go for Thanksgiving to go and eat or whatever. So, and I refuse to even hop on, I, and I'm saying, I refuse to hop on a bus full of other dirty homeless people who are perping me, and then I can't even go take a bath or a shower. Um... <clears throat> Dog, I'm going to tell y'all this quick Thanksgiving story. 
Cause, but anyway, I, I mean, I, I, like every year they say that, you know, don't celebrate Thanksgiving because it's pagan and don't celebrate Thanksgiving because if you celebrate Thanksgiving, then you're celebrating the genocide of the Native Americans and stuff like that. And um, the blood, the mass bloodshed, blood sacrifice rituals, you know, of the Native Americans. So they say don't celebrate it because, and, and then it's not, you know, truly presented in history. You know, they make the Thanksgiving sound like a good thing or whatever. So it's like, I'm mixed with Native American, you know, so, um, but me being street homeless with so, such little money, it's like, you know, I probably got no choice but to just eat that dinner, you know, and, um, it's cause, and I'd be by myself anyway, so, I, I'd be damned if I get on a freaking, uh, go to the, I don't even have a, like, the buses don't run it, if they're not running, I don't even have a way to, to get, to get to the waterfront mission anyway, and then I'm banned from that Ansley First Baptist Church as well, so, um, they don't want me there, so I, I, I have to miss out on that dinner, but fortunately, like, last year, um, I was walking down, is it, was it North Palafox? Wait, hold up. I get North Palafox Street and Pensacola Boulevard mixed up, or they seem kind of confusing. But but that was when that lady set me up. Um, that fake Christian perp lady set me up with the hotel room with bed bugs, and then d stood me up when she was supposed to help take me out the hotel, and then I I was forced to be left to walk. And I was so mad that I had to walk like almost all the way downtown, but I'm glad halfway through a lady has that drive for lift. She saved me um, to ride halfway, I mean, ride a certain distance to downtown. And I was walking for hours that day and um, Waffle House did not allow me to sit up in there. But I think I remember they, they gave me a, f a free, I forgot what it was. They gave me something free to eat. You know, they gave me a free meal to eat, but they wouldn't allow me to stay there, stay sitting in there past 30 minutes. So um, I had that altercation with that, um, at the America's Best Value Inn and Suites, that's right across the street from um, the Greyhound Station on Pensacola Boulevard, in, uh, you, know, you know, here in Pensacola. So, um, but I'm glad walking by, there was somebody gave, who passed by in a truck, and I think they gave me like four plates of food, but they said they were going another place, so they said that they couldn't give me a ride. I'm like, I was trying to ask for a ride, but thanks for the food anyway, you know. So um, anyway, four years ago, I was living in uh, Greenville, South Carolina, and I wasn't homeless. I had the Section 8 at that time. And um, there was like an all-you-can-eat homeless buffet. But I didn't feel comfortable, even though they had hand sanitizer. The homeless men with the dirty hands and stuff, everybody just digging in the food and stuff like that. Like, gross. And they didn't care. They just grabbed the food. Like, that's how they do with the homeless, even, you know, at shelters and other soup kitchens and stuff. But it was cool. I mean, we, we rode on the bus from, um, from Greenville to Simpsonville, South Carolina, and there was this church, and oh man, they really had like, it was like an all-you-can-eat buffet for homeless at this big church or whatever, but the fact is I felt grossed out by the, um, but was forced to, like, had no choice but to, you know, just, you know, feeling gross or whatever, you know, so I don't care, I'm just not gonna go anyway, even though I'm not allowed to go to Inslee First Baptist Church with the lady who looked like a a, a white lady that, uh, what's her name, that uh, Sally lady, that narcissistic perp, who um, she's probably 73 years old and she's a narcissistic abuser who, who looked like a, a female 
hardcore Butch Man Dyke female version of um like an albino version of uh the the Mike the zombified Michael Jackson from the thriller video with glasses. So, you know, they and she took part in setting me up on the coldest day. It was the day after MLK holiday. And, you know, they set me up and lied on me and had me wrongfully banned. And, and you get up and want to start preaching and talk about the Lord and his great. I mean, y'all make me so fucking sick, you know. So I don't have to have their dirty, satanic, dirty, evil dinner, too. They probably did a whole bunch of rituals and witchcraft spell on the food anyway before serving it to the homeless. Because, like, one time I was in Los Angeles, and they had this one lady from New Orleans um, who was part of the order of the Easter star and they're serving people food. And I didn't feel comfortable with it, but I didn't have much of anything else to eat. Like if they have Freemasons and order of the Eastern star serving food, pretending to do good deeds, but who knows what freaking witchcraft spells and rituals they did on the food before serving the public. That's so evil and fucked up. And one time I went to one of the food banks in, in Los Angeles and it was a black church pastor at that food church food bank and he proudly showed me off his um masonic his card showing his masonic affiliation and stuff like that you know but damn they know home they, they're fucked up because they know homeless people ain't got no other choice you know and i'm not trying to sound ungrateful or, or complain or anything but i'm just saying this is i'm just exposing this is the trap that they corner us into you know <clears throat> So, um, or other homeless who are hungry and feel like they ain't gonna, that was a fly or whatever, a gnat, feel like, you know, they feel like they ain't got no choice, but some of them don't even care, you know, some of them are meth, meth out of their minds, you know, so back to what I was saying, you know, that the lady, get away from me, that, that lady, you know, when she found out about a, um, uh, was it the end of September or was it the beginning of November <clears throat> when she found out I was homeless? No, I think it was the end of September before I, because I was in the hotel like almost all of October and um, the beginning of November. <clears throat> so then it was November 7th was a Saturday, a Monday night. I mean, each Sunday, Monday night. So it must have been November 10th when I had that issue with the, um, I had the issue with, so, so <clears throat> when I had the issue with the steak and shake people, oh, they causing me to have a headache. And then, um, this, I mean, that was the first day I had that altercation with that substitute perp, um, librarian. He only mm -hmm. fills in when the main lady is, um, can't, ooh, they all of a sudden got a badass headache <clears throat> out of nowhere. So, um, I haven't been getting headaches in a while, but there was a point in time I was getting them all the time. So, um, you know, she, the, the old lady would try to give me suggestions on, well, why, and then she want to keep tabs and making sure I go to this place and go to that place for help. And, and it's like, I even told her today that, you know, I'm going through a situation that, you know, it's too complicated to talk about. Um, and I did tell her, well, I'm blacklisted, but I know she's a perp, and in, she's a highly narcissistic perp. I think she's racist, too, and she's a narcissistic perp who's, you know, in on my targeting. So, they, as I said, these perps, they must think we're stupid and don't know shit about our targeting. And then they ramp it up worse when we when we find out that we been that what's happening to us is we being gang stalked and targeted and hit with electronic weapons and having all this weird stuff happen to us and stuff. <clears throat> so, you know, I think this lady don't really care about helping me get back on my feet, but I think she's just sick and tired of seeing my face and just want me to stop coming here or trying to you know manipulate me to. You know, trying to make me feel clearly unwelcome, but then trying to pretend in front like it's a guise, under a guise of wanting to help me better myself. When, you know, because when, 
when that guy gave me a problem, I thought she was one of the bosses, but then that young kid <clears throat> is um supposedly the big boss or the manager. But that old lady, she tried to, I don't even know any of these staff here, I don't know any of their names. But the old lady, she made it like as if she agreed with the guy, with the perp, with the narcissistic perp guy. And then the narcissistic perp guy, he, I don't, it's like he don't even acknowledge me. Like as if he called himself punishing me for, with the silent treatment because I told on him. And he could still keep his job, so why you mad? You know, <clears throat> so, um. The lady trying to make it like as if because I'm homeless and not wearing a mask, then I have I should be able to have less rights to um that I should have less rights to um you know get on a computer and use the computer or ask for help you know but she's like well you used to have a laptop. Why don't you bring your laptop? Well, in, in, within a year, anything could have happened to my laptop, especially me being targeted. But I'm like, damn, I, I'm surprised she even remembered that I had a laptop. But, it, I mean, you don't think my laptop could have been stolen or it could have been broken or something happened? But then she's like, oh, you, you, you know, that's what she tried to say. Well, why don't you bring your laptop? Didn't you? Well, why should I have to bring a laptop, you know, when other people can use the computer? So it's like she trying to find, you know, covert ways in the same way people try to the perps try to manipulate you into committing suicide it's like she's trying to find underhanded and covert sneaky ways to trying to you know talk me into you know to stop coming here and so she even make it like as if she pretends to front like she's doing this for my own good or like she's looking out for me when i'm i mean because you passed by me several times earlier today and you know, just looked at me or didn't even acknowledge me. And then if I if I come to her and ask her for help, she'll just talk down to me with an attitude and like as if I'm fucking stupid, you know. But if you don't even really freaking like me, and but all of a sudden now you want to help me, you know, I don't even think she cares about if I eat tomorrow or not. I don't even think she cares about that. I think she just want me to stop coming to this library. And, 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 you know, and, and she thinks that I should be more so forced to wear a mask because I'm homeless. And I said, well, I avoid the homeless clique and stay to myself anyway. You know, she she uh, just assumed that because I'm homeless, then I just must be in a shelter and crowded around a lot of people. And I don't. And I come here because they don't have that many people here. You know, I just try to find as little people to a little bit of people to be around or just be around my be by myself as much as possible and i prefer to just be by myself i don't like living with people i don't like being around people i hate humanity i freaking hate people because people are freaking just trash and garbage you know all these freaking massive amounts of gang stalking perps who are narcissistic and care nothing about another freaking human being you know, they make you just disgusted. The evil times that we're in, how sadistic people would rather um, be, you know, you know. Humans aren't fucking human anymore. And, and the Americans are the, the, they think they're the smartest, but yet they're the most brainwashed on this planet, the most brainwashed com uh, country on this planet, yet think they're the smartest. And had the most sense. Like this old lady right here, you can tell she's 100% brainwashed. So I don't know why they, they say that they elim want to eliminate people over 70 years old because the, they say that, you know, 70 years old, that, um, you know, I guess if you can't be active and productive in a new world order, then they want to eliminate you. But people these days can't wait to retire just so that they can sit back and watch TV. Like the high yellow whore Miss Linda that was 62 years old in Los Angeles, I think it was the year 2014, and I tried to go to vacation Bible school in Los Angeles, and I kind of found out the high yellow whore Miss Linda was a recently, she recently retired, and she's from Mississippi, but she adapted the fake LA people mentality, and she's a narcissistic abuser who's highly narcissistic, and she was um, 62 years old and recently retired, 
and she arrogantly bragged and boasted about how, yay, now I can sit home and watch TV. <clears throat> you know, but I freaking couldn't stand her. Um, and she didn't act Christian at all. But then, you know, she was like a light-skinned black version of that narcissistic dyke Sally from the freaking uh, Inslee First Baptist Church here. That's the role she played, you know, pretty much at that so-called friendly Baptist church. And I'm like, well, this so-called friendly friendship Baptist church is anything but friendly. How about we call it friendless Satan's church, Satan's friendless church or, or whatever, uh, something like that, you know, because nothing friendly about that so-called church. <clears throat> you know, when I was trying to be deeply involved in Christianity and stuff like that. And it's like being targeted, I can't even be part of a targeted individual community. And like I, being a Christian, I can't even be part of a Christian community because I'm just kicked out, you know, or not welcome, not allowed. So, um, you know, if I try to go to housing authority, it doesn't mean that they're gonna get me housing next week. Or, I mean, I'm on a housing list. And that lady tried to tell me, well, you should go and fill out a new application six months. I mean, every six months. Why well, fill out a new one if I'm already on the list? It's not like filling out a new one. I mean, I'm talking about that lady out there. Filling out a new one, you know, I just have to wait for this so-called two years to be up. But they treat you like, they're black women who treat you like trash at the area housing, you know. In the Section 8, the, the, I mean, the um, waiting list is just about never open. And for, in order for me to get quick housing, and they even said that that's not guaranteed, is I have to cave back into the fake mental health system. And that would even take like two or three months. Like they, they might be like, well, it will be like 90 days until you can see a psychiatrist, until you see a doctor. And then after that, then you can get help with housing and this and that. But in the meantime, they have all these mental health social workers, fake social workers and mental health therapists who are um, blaming you for all your problems and perping you and manipulating you and trying to set you up to get locked up in a mental institution. And then they front like it's for your own good when they don't they know damn well they don't mean you any good. They don't have your best interests at heart. And they just want you destroyed and dead and eliminated from their sight. You know, so um, that lady, she's the only one who treat me like that, you know, and then she treat me like I'm a real, real, real stupid baby. Like when I, if I ask for something quick and simple, just like any, any normal person would have, like if I ask where is, you know, um, where, where can I, I, I mean, say for example, if I say, where can I find the, you know, the nearest Publix? And then this lady will give a long-winded, like, explanation, like as if I'm like too dumb to, you know, I mean, I know Publix is just down the street and to your right, or whatever, you know, but, you know, you know how, how you know how, um, well, damn, my head is hurting so bad. But speaking of that, yesterday at the gas station, I asked, at Tom Thumb, I asked the lady at the gas station, excuse me, what, and, they, and perps always, I don't know why they perp you so heavily at the gas station. Well, the Circle K near my sleep spot, for the first time in a long time, I went there, and I'm surprised that they didn't perp me and everything went smoothly, and I got my stuff and got the hell on out. So I'm glad for that, you know, this morning. But anyway, I went to the Tom Thumb yesterday and the um, lady printed out a receipt and then um, pointed to me like as if I was too dumb to know where on a receipt to find the address. I, when I, I just simply asked, what's the address to this Tom Thumb? And, you know, she you know, went out of her way to just treat me like I'm too dumb to read. And and I'm under, is it a perp thing or a Pensacola thing that people treat you like, treat me like as if I'm too dumb to know how to read simple stuff, you know? 
So all, all she had to do was say freaking uh, 54, 50 softly filled. <clears throat> but no, she went out of her way to print out a receipt or give me some another person's receipt. And then, you know, trying to point out like as if I'm a baby or something, you know. So um, noise harassment again. They've been doing this all day, all day, all day. You hear it? So, um, yeah, I, they must be hitting me with frequencies because now they're trying to cause me forced urination and this headache feels kind of nauseating and um, just like all of a sudden, you know, so I'm going to get off here and bye.